All right, so there's always this car, this vehicle, floating around Craigslist and Facebook, Marketplace, sites like that. And as a YouTuber, YouTubers joke with each other about buying this car. And like, we all know it's probably would make great videos, but nobody wants to buy it at all. And uh, it's just kind of the way it's been for a while. And you see these cars every day on there. You know, if you buy that, you don't really want it. It's gonna cost a lot of money. It'll never actually be fixed. And when you go to sell it, you're not gonna be able to even give it away, right? All you guys are probably laughing. You already know what I'm talking about. Um, and a lot of times, <laughs> they'll almost give one to you if you want to, if you dare to even buy one, right? They look good from afar. The interiors look great. The build quality is total garbage, total garbage, right? And a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. We're talking about Land Rover, Land Rover, or Range Rover is the model I'm particularly talking about we see the most of. Now, they've had a very long timeline on these vehicles. And a lot of different companies that owned them, depending on which engine you get, what year it was determines, of course, what company built it. Um, depends on what arrangement of nightmare you're looking to get into. It's even hard to do a video on this because Everywhere you look, there's everything says something different about what year bought uh, Land Rover, what year was sold, what engines. So we're on, we're on Land Rover Mission I think that's how you say it. Uh, so it says 1947, the Rover Company was started by Chairman Maurice Wilkes. They designed the first Land Rover, which ran on Jeep axles. So I guess back then it had been a Willys Jeep axles, right? I think it's the only Jeep around back then. Um, and that goes on to April 30th, 1948, the first Land Rover officially debuts for sale in the Amsterdam Motor Show. Okay, so this is like way back. We're coming, we're coming in. 1967, Rover Company becomes Rover Triumph as part of Leyland Motor, later British Leyland Motors. Okay, so at this point in time, we're still pretty much 100% uh, British built, right? 1978, Land Rover Limited becomes its own company under British Leyland Motors 30 years after the creation of the first Land Rover model. Okay, still British. 1994, the Rover Group is acquired by the BMW. That's when things started to get questionable. <laughs> things started to get a little skewed at this point in time. Um, so back then, I think they were still using Land Rover engines. I don't think they they change engines till later, but that depends on what part of the world you're in. If you're buying these in Europe at this point in time, they're pretty much exclusively diesel. If you buy them in America, they're not. You might be able to get a diesel that old in America. Primarily, that's not what it was, right? And in 2000, the Rover Group is broken up by BMW and Land Rover and sold to Ford. This is interesting because what, up to 2006 or 2008, they still use the BMW engines. That was an option. So guess you gotta stay with me on this. That would be the, the M62 TU, the timing chain guide failure extravaganza. But that was only on a certain model, right? I don't think he had that with the supercharged version, HSE version. Uh, then if the Land Rover themselves um, the Disco series, they had Jaguar engines in those years, a slip sleeve. Why do you guys like, oh no, it didn't. Hold on. Depends on what model you get, right? I used to have one with a slip sleeve problem. I think it was a 2002. That was a Land Rover Disco 2 or 2, I think. 1 or 2. Can't remember. Too many cars since then. Um... So then, at this point in time, unless you know about these engines, you, it's sketchy buying one of these vehicles, right? And I've heard from some of the British before, some of the diesels, 
uh, in these years over there had all kinds of issues too, depending on there again, what make a model it was. Very complex for sure. Um, in 2008, Tata Motors, based in Mumbai, India, right? Uh, purchased Land Rover and Jaguar from Ford and creates a new Jaguar and Land Rover subsidy. Okay. At this point in time, if you buy one of these, you're going to get a Ford engine. Maybe. Did Tata finally rework stuff down the road? I really don't know. And there's no clear answer. That's where this stops. It doesn't say anything about anything after that. Here's going to be the next question. Are any of these... Land Rovers ever made here in the United States? No, they're not. They have plants in the United Kingdom, uh, the, the Halewood plant, the Solohu plant, oh, that's not how you say that, in the UK. Slovakia has a plant, Brazil, China, of course, and India, of course, because they own it right now, right? I don't know how long the new plant was going until they bought it, but they're made there as of now. Um, it's pretty much a rundown of this. So let's say if I go buy, let's say you go buy a 2012 Land Rover Range Rover, right? How much will that cost? And here's the things that kind of are weird about it. A 2012 and up, 2012, 2015, around about $30,000, right? Depends on how much it costs new, whether that's considered holding its value or not. Um, I don't know. You could buy 2008, 2010. Well, 2008 would be fully Ford owned uh, Land Rover at that point. And those are anywhere from five to $10,000, right? To buy one with the pre-2008 with M62 TU, it depends on how many miles, depends on this or that, three to four or $5,000, all the way down to 1500 bucks if it doesn't run. And you see a lot of them on there for that. Um, you also see some older ones. When right before BMW bought it, like 92, 93, for a couple thousand dollars here and there. But you know, just looking through Facebook Marketplace real quick, that's the prices of it. Really interesting. But there again, the uh, Land Rover Evoque. You see those prices come down quite a bit. Twenty one thousand, eighteen thousand for some of those. 2014, 2015, and that year range. So does that mean that these newer Land Rovers are good quality? Well, I really don't know. I'm not really into to Land Rovers, to be honest with you. Um, it's something that kind of pokes you from the background every once in a while and says, hey, look at me. You see it run through cheap, broken, needs engine or some crap like that. And you're like, oh, God, not today right not today so that's kind of the whole situation as a youtuber you see a lot of cars like that and i have to hand it to a lot of youtubers they do like ford chevy and dodge that's a tough that's tough also i wouldn't i would not want to be a youtuber and have to do that um some guys are into that stuff more power to them am i going to go buy a ford chevy or dodge and do youtube videos of it gotta hope not if you see me do that things are really really gone sideways um will we snipe off a range rover that's what you all want to really know there's a lot of range rover guys on here will you will i snipe off a range rover if it comes in cheap i don't know there again even a newer one there's a bunch of them on there they aren't selling right so you're gonna spend a pretty good chunk of money and more extreme chunk of money fixing it in the very end you it might take you a year or two years to sell that and they went through a thing here a while back with Range Rover. Even Kia and Hyundai went through this too, where loan companies didn't want to loan on them. They were such a nightmare that they didn't want to loan on stuff. And you can you could buy like a new Kia or a, a Hyundai, but my friends that are in the banking industry, they're like, oh, whatever it is, don't don't we don't do loans on one of those, no matter what, right? They get to the end of their life and that's it. So maybe that's changed, that's been a few years ago. Maybe that's changed, I don't know, but I doubt it, right? That's gonna be it, guys. Hope you liked today's video. Not bashing Land Rover, telling the story. And that's why I haven't bought one yet. Thanks a lot, we'll see you later.